Welcome to another video by Psychology for Life, living life to the fullest using the principles of psychology. This video will present an overview and current issues in the field of personality psychology. Personality psychology is the scientific study of individual differences in people's thoughts, feelings, and behaviors, and how these come together and are manifested as personality. The field of social psychology is the scientific study of how people's thoughts, feelings, and behaviors are influenced by the actual, imagined, or implied presence of others. This field of psychology seeks to understand the social environment and its effect on persons. In recognition of the truth of Levin's equation, personality and social psychology have been studied in tandem for decades in order for us to fully understand persons. Another thing we should understand as an overview of personality psychology is that personality is closely intertwined with psychopathology. In order to understand abnormal personality functioning, we must first understand normal personality functioning. Makes sense, right? However, for many decades, the study of personality and psychopathology was split and progress without communicating with each other. It's a good thing that nowadays there is growing realization of the connection between personality and psychopathology. It has been suggested that there are four models of the possible connection between personality and psychopathology. The first model is called the vulnerability or predisposition model. This model states that pre-existing personality traits or temperamental styles predispose an individual to developmental illness. The second model is the complication or scar model. This model suggests that certain experiences scars a person's personality, changing it in key ways from pre-morbid functioning. For example, a person who was previously high in openness to experience would decrease in openness after a traumatic experience. The third model of the connection between personality and psychopathology is the pyothoplasty model. This model, also called the exacerbation model, states that personality influences the manifestation of a later disorder rather than having a causal role in the disorder. In essence, the personality either worsens or improves the outcome of a disorder, but it does not cause it. The last model, called the spectrum model, suggests that personality and psychopathology are both part of the same continuous latent dimension of personality. An example of this are the schizophrenia spectrum of disorders that are said to lie along a continuum and are differing manifestations with the same underlying cause. The previous slides gave us a brief overview of personality psychology. Now let's look at the current issues in the field. The issues that will be presented are not in order of importance. The first issue is whether it is possible to integrate all the different theories of personality into one grand theory. However, at the moment, it does not seem possible to achieve this feat. So the suggestion is to consider that all these theories are providing different levels of explanation. Some theories look at the individual differences in people's goals, intentions, and meaning, and so these are at the knowledge level of explanation. Some theories look at the individual differences in thinking and processing, and therefore are at the cognitive level of explanation. Finally, some theories look at individual differences in the physical and neuronal level. A second issue in personality psychology is its acceptability as a field in psychology. One of the reasons for this is because of the way the subject is taught at the undergraduate level. Usually, personality psychology is taught using the grand tour of the graveyard approach. This is done by giving a thorough introduction to the life and theory of brilliant but long-deceased personality theorists. Unfortunately, this approach leads to the thinking that personality psychology is irrelevant to the present times, and the usefulness of its theories have long passed. 
Another reason for the difficulty of personality psychology to gain acceptance is because of a critique by Walter Mischel, where he stated that there is little evidence for cross-situational consistency in the behavior of persons. This means that there seems to be little evidence for the construct personality and that people's behaviors are largely determined by the environment. Decades of research has shown that Michel's claim is not true and that there is indeed regularity in people's behaviors across situations largely because of their personality. Another reason is that personality psychologists often forget the need to highlight the usefulness of personality psychology. They forget to answer questions such as, what is the value of this? How will this improve my life? How does this help us understand and improve the human condition? A third issue in personality psychology is the insularity among personality psychologists themselves. For example, those studying the Big Five usually think it is more important to the field of personality versus the topic of attachment, which many personality psychologists consider to be unrelated to personality. A fourth cutting-edge issue in personality psychology is the connection between a person's traits and their biology. Evidence is now beginning to accumulate that shows the connection between personality traits and the function of our brains. A fifth issue in personality psychology are the implications of new technology to the study of personality. Another exciting trend in the study of personality are the emergence of new technologies that allow the expression and the study of personality. For example, Facebook posts can be studied as an expression of the personality. A sixth issue in personality psychology is that gradually there is realization of the importance of studying individual differences in moral and ethical behaviors. It is important to understand these because it has such a big implication in our societies. A seventh current issue is the importance of not just focusing on personality pathology, but also on the strengths and virtues of the human personality. What are the character strengths that cause people to live seemingly extraordinary lives, and how can we develop them? Finally, the eighth issue is the importance of understanding culture and its influence on personality. Even though many theories claim that they have cross-cultural applicability, it is important to focus on individual differences that are the result of culture. And there you have it! I hope this brief overview and introduction to the field of personality psychology and its current issues have shown you what a vibrant, interesting, and relevant field of study personality psychology is and its potential for helping people learn how to live better lives. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe.